Man, I gotta work on this tool. It's not doing what I want today right now. What kind of stone is that? It's a really fine V stone. It's a diamond. Well, it's not. It's a diamond shape. It's not a diamond stone. It's a hard white Arkansas stone. Diamond configuration. I just use it to dress V tools. That's what it's for. There's something going on here. I don't know just what it is. This tool. V's are the hardest things to get running and keep running. It's because they're complex? Yes. See, this one's not wanting to cut. It's dragging. You have to be really careful sharpening these things. You can lose the geometry on them just in a heartbeat if you're not careful. About put you in the nut house. There are all kinds of mistakes you can make when you're sharpening one of these. So, you know, it feels better than in that pine. I don't know if you could ever film that down there, but you could draw it and explain what you're doing you know what's going on there because the whole thing on V's is just the fact that people don't get the inner and the outer lined up and when you don't get that you never have a good V that's well, getting really close and you just have to do what I did here just go back square the edge and start over and fix it because you can't see how much you're off until you've squared it, if that makes sense. Until right. you get that flat line on there of white, you don't know which way you're off the most. That's just ready to turn into an edge right now. Okay, do the other side just a little bit. What you want to do is you want to get your two straights sharp to go to an edge and then once they went to an edge then you do the, the bottom down there. You don't want to try to do the bottom first. You lose your guide. And of course I'm older but you just can't see that fine enough with a naked eye. No, it's... It's too small. Yeah, even me looking at it, I... Yeah, you're dealing with things that you just can't... You do see a lot more under magnification. Yes, you do. And it gives you a really good indication of what you're doing right down there at that bottom. So if you don't get that centered, you'll never have... Your V-tool will never be right. I know that seems simple, but it's... V tools are bare to sharpen. Hardest thing I've ever sharpened is these things. To get them to cut right, stay sharp. It's just ready to go over. Make sure I don't have any burrs in there. If you have any burr rolled over, it'll distort what you're seeing. So you just want to get everything cleaned up right as it's getting ready to pop over to an edge. Well, that looks good. It's just a matter of flipping that edge now. It's ready to go. As soon as it goes sharp, I'll switch from this 600 diamond down to that hard Arkansas. And what are the differences there? It's finer. It's just finer cut. And I want to 
closer I get here. the more critical everything becomes. I'm going to switch over. Some Sinclair Dino Juice. Yeah. Without that you can't sharpen tools. What about a little spit? Yeah, spit works too. Does it? Yeah, spit's fine. The only thing is, and like the diamonds, a lot of guys say, well, you need to run water on your diamond stones. And that's true, you can't. But water and steel can cause corrosion. And I just find oil, I like to just, and if, I don't know where my can is right at the moment, WD-40. I'll just hit my stones a lot of times, WD-40, and clean them. I use that to clean my diamond stones all the time. Notice how this stone's really quiet compared to the other one because it's not cutting very much. Okay. Think of it more as a polishing stone than a cutting stone. Well, that diamond stone was cutting pretty good on there. Okay. This side's went to an edge. This side has just not quite popped over yet. It will here just shortly. And you'll almost know when that goes over to an edge. It's, it's almost a different sensation. I can feel it starting to drag a little more now. It's getting some of it's coming over. And you're just getting that to where that's fine enough that you're out there to that edge. And the edge is when you no longer reflect light. Okay, boy, I got a perfect V there. You want to yeah. see it? Yeah. I haven't touched the bottom yet, but look at it under magnification. Okay. See that? Yeah. See the V back here now matches the the groove inside the tool. It is as far as east and west there, north there. Now I'll f sharpen it to match the inside. Okay. Okay, but okay. You, the key is getting that V centered there. Because once that V is centered, then you can work it. And that gives you the right cut that you want. Yes, it gives you a consistent edge all the way around that V tool. If that's okay. off, then you'll cut through one side and you'll have a line come back in there. I shorten my rotation how many degrees I'm rotating the tool because my point is mostly right out in the center and so I'm just wanting to work on that where most of the material is. I don't want to cut the sides back while I'm chasing the point. Well how many strokes are you doing before you check it? Oh, on that fine count. stone, maybe 8 or 12, 8 to 12, probably. We're basically to an edge now. Put this side down a little further. Knock any inside burrs out. And see where we are. We might go put it on the strop and see if it'll come to an edge. This is a frame of reference. I got the camera out and started recording when you said you were getting close. Yeah, we've about, been at this for another that was 10, 15, 15 minutes. minutes ahead of that. Yeah, so that's, we're about half an hour into sharpening this. Getting it to where he wants it. But to get a good edge on your V-tool, like, and I don't know how close you can get on that. And you, what you want, is that edge out here to be a nice straight line. You don't want that to be curved or raggy. And what'll happen is right down there at the tip, if you get the outside bevel off from the inside groove, is you'll get a cut back right down there at your tip on one side or the other. And that's what you don't want in a V-tool, because it'll never cut right. 
this tool is just as sharp, just as straight on both sides. Nice single plane bevel. Follows right around the end, right up this side. I got a little bit right here, but that's from a previous grind that'll come out with time. I'm not worried about that. So that's what we've got. Okay, I'm gonna take it over and strap it. Strap it real quick and then we're gonna test it. It's not sharp enough. It's close, but it's it's draggy. So I wanna see what I've got going on. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just not there. I can see it. And now that I honed it over there on the straw. I can see a little bit of light reflecting. The problem with V-tools is they don't have a long enough edge where you can like run your thumb across them, you know, and really feel them. Right. They, they just, they don't have any of the qualities that other chisels have to really know when they're sharp. And uh, you're just kind of stuck. You're just, you're basically just stuck with these things, yes. That's a good way of putting it as in, is you're just stuck. You just really have to take your time, feel your way in. I mean, this is the wood block here, it's pine. And see, it gets a nice little shaving up. But... That basswood, it's, it was still stringing in that basswood. Basswood's got a longer grain, it's stringier material. It's usually softer than good pine. That feels sharp to me. Sometimes I find that you just run them a little bit, you'll get the burr rolled off of them. And this still got a little burr on one side, I can tell. Okay. Definition in this line. Move on. It is right there. It's the one I've been looking for. All those tests out of there in one shot. 